And we are rolling on August 25th, where it's a beautiful sunny day. There's a beautiful wind blowing in from the Bay Area, <laughs> making everyone cold in this 80 degree room. And we're about to hear from William, who's going to share with us how a film really moved him. He looks around the room making sure that all computers are closed, phones are away. He's managing attention, <laughs> communicating respect non-verbally, finding friendly eyes near the front and center. Say your name, feel the love. Start your speech. I will. I will. I'm gonna start off with a story slash joke for you guys. So a couple are arguing, right? The man, thinks it's impossible for him to feel happy and sad at the same time. And so the woman's trying to convince him otherwise, but he won't be convinced. And so the woman finally says, okay, I'll prove it to you. And then, he, and then she says to him, out of all of your friends, you're the best in bed. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, thank you guys. So um, the little girl in Inside Out, the movie Inside Out, similarly felt mixed both happy and sad at the same time at one point in the movie. This movie is about an 11-year-old girl named Riley and her um, emotions that exist as people inside her brain. And uh, it was an emotional roller coaster for me. It, was, it hit me harder than Toy Story. So I'm, I wanna share with you guys today about how the movie made me feel alarmed, sad, and mixed. So Dr. Keltner, one of the psychologists that um, helped make the movie, she, she said, emotions help shape our perceptions of the world, our memories of our past, and even our moral judgments of right and wrong. And I completely agree. I think all of our memories are associated with at least one emotion, right? Like, we attach happiness or sadness to them. And um, I think this movie was very good at bringing out my emotions. So let's dive right into my first emotion, which was alarmed. Um, Riley's about to run away. This is near the climax of the movie. She's, uh, she's lost her two main emotions, which are happiness and sadness. They're lost in the inner recesses of her brain. And uh, her other emotions are not able to control her anymore. And she's about to run away from home. She's getting on the bus and everything. And um, I knew this movie would have a happy ending because it's Pixar. And I knew that her emotions would return to her. But I still felt kind of alarmed that her emotions would never come back because it reminded me of a period of time when I, was, when I felt similarly dark. This was when my dad passed away when I was around 13-ish. Um, and um, I remember just entering a really gloomy state of my life where I just couldn't get happy for like a couple months. And it made the first few years of high school very like, very unpleasant for me. So um, I, I kind of felt how Riley was feeling. And um, I was just alarmed for her and I really hoped that her emotions would return to her. So the second emotion I felt was sadness. It was extreme sadness. This is like one of my favorite all-time scenes, movie, movie scenes. So um, Riley's main emotion, happiness, is stuck in the inner recesses of her brain. She has to get back to the control center um, in a few minutes or else she'll die. And stuck with her is her imaginary friend, Bing Bong, who is also inside her brain. And um, basically, they find a way to escape. But uh, Bing Bong, the imaginary friend, realizes that only one of them can escape. And so he sacrifices himself in order to allow Joy to escape. And um, he shows no nothing but pure joy at the fact that she was able to escape, even though he's about to die in a matter of seconds. And uh, this scene really moved me because um, it, just, it just made me think about the imaginary friends and the toys that we used to have when we were kids. They, you know, they'd always be there for us. Um, they'd play with us. They'd make us laugh. They'd cry with us. When our parents were off to work, you know, they'd be there playing with us. And they were always there when we needed them. But once we forgot about them, once we didn't need them anymore, um, they're just left in the dust. But they still care about us, you know? They still care about us so much. And, um, and uh, yeah, I was just really sad thinking about that, how they're so selfless, even though we don't really talk to them anymore, we don't really need them. So the final emotion that I felt was mixed, a mixture of happiness and sadness. This is when Riley's emotions return to her, and she's back to normal. She's going back home. She decides not to run away. And um, she's about to, she, she's apologizing to her parents. She's saying she misses home because they just moved and she doesn't fit into the new area. And she's begging them not to punish her. And her parents are just happy that she's safe because 
you know, she's been gone for a long time, and so they hug her. And so she generates a, a sort of mixed feeling where she's happy and sad at the same time. And um, I can totally empathize with this because this is the exact same effect I had uh, that was on me when my mom was trying to comfort me during those times after my dad's passing. Um, she tried, she basically tried everything to cheer me up. Largely, it didn't really work. I was still really, really bummed out from that period of time. But I remember feeling exactly how I felt when I watched that part of the film. And back then, I didn't know what, what I was feeling. I, it was sort of like a bittersweet feeling. And I was like, why am I feeling this feeling when I should be just feeling sad? You know, this doesn't make any sense. And now I understand it's because my mom is there. And the understanding of my mom being there for me um, during one of my darkest periods makes me happy. And um, at least now I understand what that feeling is. And I could totally empathize with what Riley was going through. So in summary, this was a uh, this was a, an insane movie. It was uh, definitely an emotional roller coaster ride. Um, I don't usually cry during movies, but uh, this movie got me got me feeling some type of way. Um, this movie made me feel alarmed, very, very, very sad and mixed. And um, I almost feel more in tune with my own emotions. I'm able to understand emotions that I felt, you know, back then when I was a kid. I didn't understand why I had certain emotions, but now I do. And um, yeah, that mixed feeling was definitely the highlight of the movie because it was so strange. I don't usually feel those. I don't usually feel that emotion, you know. And um, it was a very unique feeling, and I'm glad I understand why I felt the way I felt during um, a few years back. And yeah, I'm sure the man in my story, the guy, the guy whose wife cheated on him, I'm sure he felt kind of weird feeling that too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, five fifty. Okay, let's start over here today. Hi, I'm Armand. Hi, Hi Armand. Uh, I really like the way you connected with the movie and you connected the movie with your own experiences and you really uh, communicated your emotions well mm -hmm. to the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Armand. Improvement? Um, hi, Murray. Hi, hi. Murray. Um, you kind of Mm -hmm. Good. You'll, and you'll see that when you watch yourself on YouTube. Well, I just want to say, I'm, I'm like shivering right now. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Well, that's okay. Uh, that's, it's good to have those feelings, and I hope the movie taught you that. Oh, shivering yeah. from the cold. Well, shivering from the cold, and it's also, you said you had a very strong emotional reaction to the movie, and, and that was part of the movie's lesson and uh, message, you know, was that uh, you shouldn't be pushing them down and pushing them away, but experiencing them and living, learning to live with all of them. Um, I like someone, thank you, uh, Will, for starting your speech with a joke. Someone got creative, so thank you for that. Uh, big, uh, big A plus on your introduction and tying back to that. That was, you know, uh, 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 and you saw I had to kind of goose the audience a little to get them to laugh, but uh, it, you, you got to kind of work the punchline a little better. But uh, it was good that you uh, started with a joke. Yeah. On your thesis preview, a little bit long, but we did get out, finally, that um, it made you feel alarmed, sad, and mixed, okay? Um, you quoted uh, Keltner and the psychologist and said you agreed with the quote, and I was a little worried that you were in trouble because at that point you were at a minute 20 and you were still at your introduction, so that needed to be tightened up and... Uh, so that you weren't so running so long. So first movie, uh, uh, emotion connection that you had was alarmed. And here, once again, and I would just uh, try to lock your legs, because you're still, and take your hands out of your pocket, let them be, people think you have a gun in there. Uh, people, and try to, um, you know, make the plot summary shorter, one or two sentences, just and and we don't need to know so much about Riley and what was going on. We just need to know about you. And when we finally got to you and 
how dark and sad you felt when your father passed away, that was good. Um, what I, when you watch yourself tonight, you did something very interesting because instead of focusing on you being alarmed at 13 that your father passed away and he wasn't going to be there anymore, you focused back on the Riley. You said, so I was glad Riley worked this out. We don't give a heck about Riley. We care about you and your emotions. So it should have been. And that's why I will felt alarmed. And remember that feeling and feel it. On your second emotion, sadness. Again, five sentences to describe the plot. Um, and here we had um, the, uh, you had some real genuine emotions remembering uh, your toys that you had. I want you to always try to speak when you're speaking about your emotions in the first person. You said, we can all remember the toys that we had. I would rather, Will would say, I remember the fire truck and the hmm, that I had and was my friend and the howdy doody doll that kept me company, whatever, you know. I'm just I'm just rifting here, but you know, you get the idea, right? And uh, so that would have made the sadness, but I still felt your sadness that came through for your toys, and so you had some genuine sadness that you were felt sensing, so that was pretty good. Unmixed, rather than just calling it mixed, why don't, why don't we say mixed emotion, you know, mixed emotions. And um, here you told us about your mother's valiant effort to try to make you smile and be happy. And it wasn't, you weren't having any of it, and you were still kind of depressed and sad. And so you remembered that, and this now you have the uh, benefit of some perspective from the distance and time. It makes more sense to you, and so now you understand the, having those simultaneous emotions, and so that was pretty good. And again, return to the emotion at the end, and, re, and that's why I had these feelings of kind of happy, kind of sad, not just in between, not anything, right? Okay. Summary was good. Um, your emotion was pretty strong, conclusion was good, and the tie back to the joke was excellent. Let's talk about your canai. Uh, speak slower, don't be so casual, and stop fidgeting. How'd it go? I think I fidgeted a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. If, I think I spoke a bit slower, but it probably isn't slow enough. Um, yeah. What's my second one? Uh, don't be so don't casual. Don't be so casual. What do you mean by that? I felt, I felt like, it felt like less of a speech when I watched my first speech. More like, hey it's man, like how's a, it going, you know, baby? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like, what would be? In the hallway, like, what's what's happening in the hood? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I got you. Well, uh, it's good to practice uh, different forms and styles of speaking so that you have a range that you can go to. So I think it's good that you noticed that. Watch your time next time you went way over. So because you do want to slow down and you don't want to you don't, you don't want to just rush through it to get through it in time in enough time, but edit it out. So edit, so you have one sentence. Riley did this. This reminded me of when my father had Then you have more time, okay? Good job, though, Willie. Thank you. Okay, that'll bring us to Alvis. Hi, Alvis. 
Uh, good afternoon. I'm Alvis. Hi, Alvis. Tears for my vision. You wonder what I see. A past slaying for attention. Well, memories are slaying me. Time never stops, but the worlds change all the time. A famous Italian director presents us a beautiful and nostalgic story in a famous movie, Cinema Paradiso, which is one of my favorite movies that I want to share with you today. The movie really moves me a lot by making me feel passionate, inspired, and nostalgic. Michael Wilmington from Los Angeles Times used to say, it is a shining valentine in the movies, full of homages, glass, and swarmingly romantic and American music. And it gets right at the impure, messy, wondrous way it captures and enriches us, which I strongly agree. Well, the first way the movie moved me was it made me feel passionate. In a small village of Sicily, the only a means of entertainment is a movie projector. Being attracted by the films, a little young boy, Toto, uh, tried everything he could to get into the theater. He spent all his money on a movie ticket and tried to make friends with the movie projectorist. When he spent uh, some money his mother gave him uh, for milk on a movie ticket, I can strongly feel the passion of this young boy, which reminds me of my childhood. When I was young, I'm crazy about music, and I played the piano all the time and even record some piano videos during the weekend. My father even blamed me for not paying attention to schoolwork and just playing around. But now, uh, when life gets busier, I hardly have any time to do what I want to do. But this little boy, I saw myself in the figure of this little boy. And he makes me passionate again. The second way this movie moved me was uh, it made me feel inspired. When I was young, I'd always be afraid of uh, enter college, you know, it's far away from home and staying alone in an apartment with several friends and you are not be able to talk to your parents uh, every day you want. But when the, in the movie, Alfredo had, uh, said to Toto that he, uh, he was young and he are supposed to go to the big cities to see the world. And he said, don't look back, don't write, forget us all. And thus, he could focus on his dreams. And finally, he succeeded. And I was inspired because, uh, because, you know, I'm young and I'm supposed to go to the big cities when I spend too much time in a small village. I believe that this is the center of the world. So I decided to go out and see the world and follow my dreams. And that's why I'm here uh, searching for my dream 8,000 miles away from home. The third way this movie moved me was it made me feel nostalgic. I always think about the past and the future, but the movie really made me think. When Toto come back from Rome 35 years later, everything has changed. The cinema in his memory was gone, and the girl he loved was gone. So it reminds me of my childhood. My childhood stories and the life of my childhood has gone. And imagine 25 years later, when we are in our 40s, what life are we living? And when our childhood faded away, what story will we remember? And who won't we forget? It's always kind of sad to think about the past, but it, I, I learned to treasure every moment we are living right here, right now. So that really made me feel nostalgic. In summary, I really feel passionate and inspired and nostalgic from the movie. Cinema to the Diesel. It's no doubt in this room that the movie really moved me. In the three hours of movie, I saw the whole life of Toto. And by watching his life, I deepened my understanding of my own life. Tears for my vision, you wonder what I see. A cinema slain for attention, while the future is calling me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waiting respectfully at the door. Good. Okay, I think we're here.
Okay, thank you, Kelly. Improvement? Hi, I'm Emma. Hi, Hi Emma. Emma. Uh, I like her speech. I think uh, you have a, you really have a ton of speech, and uh, I could feel what you feel. Uh, for improvement, uh, I think that you may did not include the uh, review. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe I missed it. Uh, I said the uh, review from Michael Wilmington from the Los Angeles. Oh. Yeah, he said it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alvis, you started with a beautiful poem, uh, and you returned to it. Tears for my vision, you wonder what I see. A past slain for attention, well, memories are slaying me. Um, and you returned to it and uh, did it very beautifully, so you uh, understood fully the concept of the tieback. So good job on your bookends. That was very nice. And remember that bookends, it helps give the audience a sense of circularity. We've come the full circle, we end and start in the same place. You'll see that many films do this. You know, they begin and end at the same spot. Yes, this is a great film. I've enjoyed it many times myself. Uh, you said it made you feel passionate and inspired and nostalgic. Your film review was good from the LA Times. You said you agreed with it, so you got that part of it right. Your first emotion that you tried to communicate was passion, right? Yeah. Feeling passionate. Uh, well, sorry about that. I um, felt that your plot summary was a little too long and you could have spent more time on your own uh, situation with your father saying you wasted time and him sort of beating the passion and the joy out of your piano playing and stuff until you decided to be have your passion reignited, right? Mm -hmm. So that was your story of passion and remember to return to the word and so that's why I felt passion and stress it with your voice, passion. So the audience really knows it and you're re-feeling it again. Now that's why I have this passion. See? Yeah. Uninspired. Again, uh, film plot little little long and um, you said that uh, you uh, live in a little small town and that uh, you were inspired to come to the big city to the big university and uh, find yeah. your way in to experience that and again I wanted to have more of a sense of why you're inspired by this and have you been inspired at UCLA or being here or something? I didn't get the inspired part so much. Okay? Okay. Uh, it's the, you know, Alfredo said that we are supposed to go to the big cities to see the world and we shouldn't give in to nostalgia. And I was inspired by this sentence because. And you're I, not giving in to nostalgia. Uh, yeah. And you're not, and you're at the big city, and not being nostalgic about thinking about that little small town you used to live in. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, great. On the final one, ironically enough, you chose nostalgic yeah. as your third emotion, which you allegedly aren't giving into. But here you talk about it as having that as your third feeling. And here you wax poetically about 20, thinking of your life and thinking about who are you going to remember 25 years from now and who's going to be important to me. And I wish you had, again, nostalgic is a tricky emotion to communicate. I'm not sure it got, got there. Summary conclusion and tie back were great. Your can I speak fluently, be less nervous and more relaxed, and speak more naturally? How'd it go? Uh, well, I think I'm a little nervous, but more relaxed than the last time. Uh -huh. And I speak, I think, kind of fluently, and I didn't forget some sentences or words. And I move, I think, naturally. 
Yes. Yes, you did. You did a nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that will bring us to Jane. No, no, excuse me, Daniel. Daniel, my brother. <laughs> Daniel, my brother. Daniel, my brother. Daniel stands before you managing attention. Okay, she's reading. Communicating respect non-verbally, she's reading. Planning friendly eyes at the front and the center. Say your name, feel the love, start your speech. Uh, hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Daniel. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. The first mice gave up and drowned. The second mice wouldn't give up. He struggled so hard that finally turned that butter into cream. Uh, Frank's father, who is a liar and doubts tax evasion, gives a speech at a ceremony. Um, today, I'm going to share with you a film called Catch Me If You Can. The boy in the movie tries to cash out a few bad tracks, which made him a young criminal. Except Jeff Nasserson, the screenwriter, nobody really cares about what happens to him, but we stay true to uh, what happens to him emotionally as a kid. I can't agree more that he is just a kid rather than a young criminal because he is uh, trying to fix his parents' relationship uh, all the time since his parents are divorced. Uh, the movie moved me in three ways. Uh, it moved me, uh, made me feel upset, and uh, it uh, amazed me. It moved me uh, when the FBI agent uh, came to Frank's father, said to him, uh, asked him about his son's affairs. He defended his son went to Vietnam and joined the army. I also feel moved when my mother came to me. It was my third year in high school. I was feeling anxious for preparing for the college entrance examination similar to the SAT in the United States. Um, my mother told, um, asked me how I was feeling. I usually to talk these things to my best of friends and my mother, um, and I found out that talking to my mother actually had uh, such comforting effects because she is really experienced. And I also um, feel sorry for Frank when, when he was finally got caught in France. The FBI agent said to him, I will have you extradited back to the United States. Don't worry. But the terrified look on the young man's face told us he's just a kid. I also feel sorry when I broke up with a girl. And I was lying down on the bed. It was midnight. The only thing I could remember was uh, seeing her uh, moving, heading towards her school. Mm. I chose the opposite direction, crossing the bridge. Uh, it was that in the movie we should turn back and find love in each other's eyes, but I just didn't feel the courage to do so. Uh, it's hard to, um, it's hard to hold someone's heart if she is no longer into you anymore. And that's it. Um, also, it amazed me um, about Frank's intelligence. He, um, when he saw a young pilot, uh, popular among people. I came up with the idea to um, become a co-pilot of Pam, so his track seemed more convincing to seemed more convincing to bank clerks. It remind me my roommate in university. He's also very intelligent. Uh, when he started for uh, about a week for the final examination, he could uh, pass with good grades. Uh, he's a nice cooker, and he's good at dealing with relationships with his girlfriend. Um, in summary, the movie moved me, um, made me feel sorry for Frank, and it amazed me. Always live like a mouse. Um, don't be clever. 
and a sequential problem solver. And don't be caught when you're in danger falling in bucket of rain. Thank you. Thank you. 326. Thank you for waiting respectfully outside. Okay, we're somewhere back here. Relaxed more, yeah. yeah. Maybe, uh, the, you know what Tai Chi is? <laughs> oh. Chinese exercise? Oh. Yeah, you might try it so you relax your body. Because you're very, <laughs> very robotic, like that. <laughs> Flowing. <laughs> you think it's stupid. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Here, here, and then back to center. Systematically, three, three spots. Okay. Um, I like the movie you chose. I like the story, uh, the, the little story of the mice and the cream and the one that gave up and drowned and the one that swam so, tried so hard that he made cream and got out. Uh, was a story that everyone in the audience understood. What you needed was a better transition to the name of the movie and what you were going to talk about that day, see? And do you know what I mean by a transition? Yeah. Say, this story about the mice and getting out of trouble reminds me of a young man that got out of trouble in a lot of situations. More specifically, they even made a movie about this young man, and that movie was called Catch Me If You Can. And that's the movie that really moved me, and I'm going to tell you three ways that it moved me. It made me feel upset, it amazed me, and I can't tell what the first way was. So, anyway... Now, here's the problem I had with uh, you not being so precise with your emotions. Um, you said you, your setup for your first emotion, you said, it made me feel upset. Okay, so that was your first emotion, right? Upset and amazed. Second emotion. What's your first emotion? Okay, well, you don't know, we don't know, you didn't say it, okay? But you said anxious, okay, because you said the FBI came to Frank's house and then somehow your mother came to talk to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was a little confusing, but it upset you and made you anxious, what she said? She was encouraging you, so it made you feel encouraged? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was confusing, so you need to make that clearer. Okay, so when you watch yourself tonight on YouTube, see if you don't see why, why it wasn't clear. Okay? And make that clear by saying, encouraged, blah, 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 blah. and that's why I felt encouraged. You didn't stress with your voice your second emotion, which was what, upset or sorry? Upset. Upset, okay. And so here you said this was um, when you broke up with a girl, right? You were upset. And so um, I wish you would have expressed more of your emotion about how upset you were. Were you sad? Did you cry? Did you call a friend, share it with a friend, what did you do? And then return to the emotion and say, and that's why I felt upset. Okay. On the last one, I was, you said I was amazed 
at Frank's intelligence. So amazed was your third emotion, right? And then you said, I had a friend in my life, and he was good with girls and smart, and he amazed me, right? And that was your emotion. Okay, that wasn't really one very personal to you about being amazed, so we needed something a little more personal. Summary was fine, your conclusion was fine, your tie back was excellent. So let's talk about your canais. You said speak within the time limit, act more comfortably, don't cross your hands, and have more eye contact with the audience. How'd it go? Um, I think the first one, uh, speak within the time limit, uh, it's okay. But yeah. The second one, maybe uh, I, I need to uh, work on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I notice when you see yourself on TV, you keep your hands down at your side quite a bit. Let them come up and move and gesture a little bit more. Okay? So you did a nice job. Thank you. Free country. People are dying in Iraq and in Yemen. And in Iraq and in Syria, so you have freedom and liberty, so enjoy your freedom and liberty. Okay, we are now going to hear from Ashley. <laughs> I think. Okay, rock and roll, Ashley. Uh, hi, I'm Ashley. Hi, I'm hi Ashley. Ashley. Um, goodbye, our kindergarten. Uh, although they He's drawing. Wait for him to stop. They get everybody to look up. Okay, start again. Um, hi, I'm Ashley. Hi, hi I'm Ashley. Ashley. <laughs> uh, uh, goodbye, our kindergarten. Although this sentence is um, neither... Uh, inspiring, moral, not profound, but it does have the ability to bring me back to the time when I was young and uh, think of all the all my best friends then. Uh, today I will, I will show, uh, share with you the movie that moved me a lot. It's called uh, Goodbye, Our Kindergarten. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, it brought me uh, my great memory and it made me feel sad. Uh, it warmed me. Warmed me. Yeah. Uh, this movie told a story about a boy, a six-year-old boy named uh, Yang Wu. Uh, he has to drop out of the school because of an incurable disease. Uh, uh, so he won't be able to participate in his graduation ceremony. Uh, and his five best friends, uh, they decided to sneak out of their kindergarten and uh, take, took a trip to visit, uh, to find him, yeah, uh, which is full of joy and hardship. Uh, the first the first way this movie moved me was that it made me feel happy because uh, because uh, this this trip is kind of a challenge for this uh, they are too young, yeah, and for for them uh, and um, they they prepared. Carefully on this trip, even they painted a, a, a cute map. It's just some simple colorful lines, but contain, containing all the transportation and the rules they have to take. Uh, and uh, uh, however, accidents just happened one after another because uh, they, they encountered strange people. They had to protect themselves running away. And uh, uh, they, some of them got lost in the interchange station. And, uh, 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 one child was was discovered by a police, and uh, uh, he was alone, so the police sent him to home. Yeah, uh, but all of this reminds me of the naughty things I, I have done in my childhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. after, after playing all day with my friends outside and getting home late and dirty, perhaps, yeah, uh, and uh, 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 we, we couldn't, uh, we cannot be avoided being uh, exposed, scolded by our parents, but. But comparing to the happiness we had in the daytime, uh, I think it worth it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so this movie, 
brought me my great memory with my friends and made me happy. The second way this movie uh, moved me was that it made me feel bad. Uh, uh, there's a scene in the movie, uh, Yang Wu, oh, no, no. the other students asked their teachers why Yang Wu did not come to school anymore. The, the teacher simply said that uh, it doesn't matter to you. Uh, you, you will forget Yang Wu soon, anyway. Um, and uh, meanwhile, Yang Wu was sitting in the hospital bed and, uh, and uh, he was depressed. He asked the nurse if she still remembered his kindergarten's friends. Uh, the answer was no. Uh, time will dilute our sentiments anyway, after all. So uh, uh, this, this reminds me of my experience of transferring schools. Uh, when, I, uh, when I get into a new school, I, I, was, a, I was afraid, feel that uh, I, I will have trouble finding new topics, uh, common topics with, with new classmates and finding the same hobbies. So this, this I felt related to Yang Wu, that kind of hopeless and loneliness. Uh, the, the third way, the third way this movie moved me was that it warned me. At the end, one of the friends finally reached to the distant, distant hospital, uh, and um, and they uh, they prepared a simple graduation ceremony. Uh, they said the graduation graduation song and. Uh, uh, made the commencement speech together. Uh, when I saw their their contented and soft smile on their face, I felt the strong power of the friendship. Um, it was so wonderful that our friends can lift us up in spirit and make the world more bright and full. Uh, so, which comforted me a lot. Uh, in in summary, this this movie moved me. Uh, this movie brought me. Uh, my great memory, and it made me sad, and uh, it's also warmed me. Uh, there should be no doubt in this room. Oh, there's, there should be no, no, I have escaped the, the tie back. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> tie back. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 um, the most beautiful, yeah, the most beautiful discovery true friend makes is that uh, uh, they can, they can grow up separately, but without growing apart uh, and I think uh, memory is a good way of holding on things that we are uh, the things that we love and uh, the things that uh, we never want to lose uh, uh, there's no doubt that uh, yeah <laughs> there's no doubt that this movie uh, has moved me a lot and I highly re recommend this to you because Japanese are really good at dealing with the details yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for waiting respectfully outside. That was 534. try to convey emotion with uh, audience and maybe you should cut down a lot uh, a little about the movie plot so you can uh, speak within the limited time. Perfect. Yes, I keep saying it to everybody and I wish people would make edit notes and cut out plot summary down to one sentence so you learn from others. Ashley Goodbye our kindergarten. So I wanted a tie back to goodbye our kindergarten as a tie back, see? The time, the time got a long way to do that. I know, you were running way over, but still, show me that you understand the concept, okay? Um, you uh, had your thesis statement that said, it really moved me, it touched me, it brought me happy memories, and it made me sad. And you put it in that order, move me, happy, sad, and then you didn't follow that order in your no, main no. body. At first it's happy, then it's sad, then it's warm. Yeah, I know. But in your thesis, you had it in a different order. So keep the order the same. So if you if you start with happy, have it happy here. Okay. Understand? So happy, 
So you had a long plot summary, which we didn't need, and that's why you ran it almost a minute and 15 seconds over. I loved your story, though, about rolling in the grass and getting in trouble and coming home dirty and saying you were just happy playing with your friends and it was worth it getting in trouble. And that was a great emotion that you communicated that you felt happy getting in trouble for all the happiness you had playing with your friends. So that was well done, except to say, and that's why I felt happy. On the second one, sad, once again, we had a long plot summary, and then we had you saying you moved a lot and you couldn't make new friends, and I felt your sadness a little bit there, but again, remember to say, that's why I felt sad. On your third emotion, I felt warm. Again, repeat that at the end of your story. That's why I feel warm. That's why I feel yeah. warm, exactly. Um, when you're running out of time, you could have skipped the Elizabeth Foley quote and just, you know, I, I agree with you. God gave us a memory so we could have roses in December, right? Uh, I'm quoting Voltaire, by the way. I didn't, I didn't make that up myself. Uh, but uh, you're right. Memories do give us that uh, ability to uh, bring back things that are no longer with us, and it's a great thing. Um, but you ended with this, Japanese are always good with details, you know? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I'm glad they are, <sighs> I guess. Your kid eyes, less nervous and more fluent, more eye contact, be calm and be smooth. How'd it go? Uh, I think I'm more nervous than last time. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so what are you going to do about that? Yes. Pretending I'm not shaking. Okay, like you're doing now. Okay. And what I'd say is practice more and practice moving when you do the practice too. So it's not something you just do up here, but you do in practice as well. Uh, the eye contact should be three to five seconds. And other than that, you did a nice job. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to Dorota. Hi, Dorota. Hi. No self evaluation? Oh, On deck is Yi Ling. Yi Ling. Okay, rock and roll. Hi everybody, I'm Dorota. Hi, Hi Dorota. It is okay to cry. Crying is a natural response to the pain, said Baymax, an inflatable uh, personal healthcare robot, robot to hero. So, I didn't really experience a lot of pain watching this movie, but I was bawling like a baby through like pretty much in the entire runtime as I do with most Pixar and Disney movies. So today I'm going to share with you a, a movie that really moved me. Big Hero 6 made, made me feel happy, it made me laugh, <laughs> it made me cry, and it inspired me. Um, <laughs> the film Big Hero 6 de deals with many significant themes that I know you will be interested in. Robbie Collin, from the, the chief film critic from The Telegraph in 2015, stated that Big Hero 6 is a vital reminder that pop culture isn't just an escape from reality, but a way of facing up to it um, head on and reinvigorated. And I absolutely agree with him. Good. So the first day this movie made me feel was it made me laugh. The incident in the movie that made me laugh was when Baymax was running out of battery and he essentially acted like a drunk human. And this reminded me of a time when my sister and I, she's older than me, and she used to take me out and we used to try sneaking back into my house um, quietly, but it was anything but, like we were just, you know, obnoxious, woke up the entire house and you know, it just made me laugh. It was basically a parallel to that, so that made me laugh. The second way this movie made me feel was it made me feel very sad so much so it made me cry. 
um, when the incident that made me cry was when Hiro, who not only lost his parents when he was three, ended up losing his older brother who he looked up to so much and who meant so much to him. And this made me cry, not that I ever, I lost you know, my sibling or my parents, but it just made me miss them so much because they are so far away from me. And it killed me to think you know, if something like that ever happened to them, I would lose, I would be devastated. So it made me feel very sad. The third way this film moved me um, was that it inspired me. The incident in the film that inspired me was when a hero who was overqualified for SFIT doubted himself and you know told him told his brother I really want to go here and he doubted himself but his brother said that you can do it and this inspired me because a lot of the times I doubt myself as well in trying to reach my goals and pursuing my passion for nursing and a lot of times I just want to throw in the towel because it seems like too much extra work or you know whatnot and then I always have my family or my best friend inspiring me telling me that I can do it just keep going for it because you won't be fully satisfied or fully content with your life until you are doing what you love so in summary uh, I showed you three ways that Big Hero 6 really moved me how it made me laugh how it made me cry and how it inspired me there should be no doubt in this room that Big Hero 6 really moved me so whether you are crying because, or whether you're crying because your stomach hurts so much from laughing at a stupid drunk friend, or whether you are crying because your heart hurts from somebody you lost, or imagining, imagining losing somebody, lo losing somebody close to you, or whether you are laughing, or whether you're crying because you're, you can't take the mental pressure from you know, all the setbacks to overcome your goal, remember what BMX said, it is okay to cry. Step down for your feedback. 347. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrea. Thank you for uh, waiting respectfully outside. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate the, the way you structured the speech and also the fact that the, your end, the calling back to the way you used uh, okay, your speech, so it yeah. was easy also to link all your emotions together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Keanu. Hi, Keanu. Uh, I think that uh, you were a little bit nervous, and so I think you should slow down a bit, and then uh, like maybe like, take a deep breath and really think about what you want to say. Okay. <laughs> Dorota was nervous and needs to take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> or two. <laughs> Dorota, I want to... Um, suggest you move more purposefully. I had trouble keeping the camera on you. You were all over the stage. <laughs> and um, I'd like to see you walk, uh, stay in the power stance, feet wider than your shoulders, and not, not sway or rock. You kind of lock your legs so you don't. And then let me see you walk over to where Armin's talking, yeah. And talk to him. Uh, and my first way to fell move me was this. Now walk over to five steps this way. And don't turn so much to the side. Keep it cheated forward. Yeah. <laughs> so right about there. And now uh, the second way to fell move me, but still glance over there. And then the third way to fell move me, back to center. And that's all the movement you do, okay? And uh, when you see, you know, you were, you were all over the place and it was a little distracting. Your intro was excellent and you tied back to it beautifully and it set the tone for the whole uh, speech and so that was done well. You said, laugh, cry, inspired. That was clear for your thesis. You quoted the telegraph. You gave the date, thank you. And you said you agreed with the quote. So it was a perfect, significant statement. Well done. On the uh, first emotion, laugh. You didn't take too much time in giving it a plot summary. You just said, batteries run down, crazy, boom. 
and then you relive and remembered how funny it was when you and your sister tried to sneak in drunk late at night and your parents wouldn't see you or hear you and you failed at it. And we felt your mirth and happiness. Just remember to say, and that's why it made me laugh and feel happy. Just return that emotion. Stay in the what you're trying to communicate. I'm communicating happiness and laughter. On your second emotion where you said inspired. It's on the other page. Or no, it's, it's on the sad. second page. On the second emotion was cry. Um, I felt your you didn't have an exactly parallel experience, but you talked about your parents being and brother being a long way away, and that was pretty uh, clear. And just remember to say sad at the end of that. But I got your emotions there on that. On the third emotion, um, on this, um, the nursing thing you talked about, and the C in grad school, and people, people bolstering, stay in the power stance, bolstering your confidence and, you know, inspiring you to keep going. Uh, that was pretty good. Just remember to say, and that's why I feel inspired by that. Summary conclusion and tie back were excellent. You said, try not to panic to prevent stuttering. Do not slide around the stage. <laughs> Take steps, well, and remember to say conclusion clearly, and tie back to the introduction. How did it go? Only the third one. The other two I failed again. Yeah. So um, what I would say about sliding is when you practice your speech, tell your study buddy or the homeless guy that you're asking to listen to your speech, tell him I slide when I speak and I don't want to slide. So, and I want to pick up my feet and walk so I don't slide, and then you won't slide it in the real performance, okay? Other than that, nice job. Thank you. Okay, who did I say was on deck? Yu Ling. On deck, Jessica. Okay, rock and roll. Oh, wait. Mm. Battery, battery, battery. <laughs> breathe in calmness, breathe out anxiety. Remember, what do you do when you, uh, when there's a, a break in the act? Come and ask him how his weekend was. Hey, that's good. Yeah, kung fu. Yeah. 